realize that it's an illusion and not get lost in it. See, here nothing is permanent, everything changes. Tell me one thing that is not affected by time here, except me. <laughs> <laughs> what aspects of the illusion can help us become free and not more bound? I tell you nothing. <laughs> everything is temporary. Why does my mind get stuck in the small things? Because it doesn't know it's small. <laughs> This is very interesting. Gurudev, is reality what we think, perceive and experience or is there more? Reality is the sense that you have when you are in an event or in a situation. You think this is real, that is your own understanding. Like for example, when you are dreaming, you find the dream is real. Only when you wake up from the dream, when you are out of the dream, then you see that it's not real. So, any perception which gives you an idea, this is it, this is true, that is your concept of reality. Illusion is, it appears to be and it is not. Something appears to be, you keep a pen in, the, in a beaker of water, it appears to have bent, it's really not. So, what you perceive is not matching with what you know or what you understand. Then that is illusion. Gurudev, you've said that what we perceive is a small percentage of what reality actually is. So how can we gain the ability to perceive reality? And can you share a little bit about, about the reality you oh, perceive? Oh, science has said this, you know, you, you see all science, you see that's what they show you, you know, you are, our band of perception is very tiny. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste is a small um, frequency of a vast range of frequencies. So even the very understanding of this opens you up. You go and watch the Space Museum, they show you where you are and how vast and big the universe is. And that does something to you, right? It just suddenly gives a bigger context to life. It's the one thing. Wow. Right? Gurudev, sometimes what seems to be an illusion becomes what seems to be reality. What's going on here? Is that just in my mind? See, here nothing is permanent. Everything changes. Anything changes gives you an impression of illusion. And what our concept or what we think is reality, that doesn't change. If things keep changing, hey, it was there a moment and it's not there, then it's not real. One definition of reality is that which is not affected by time, that which is the same, the past, present and future. Tell me one thing that is not affected by time here, except me. <laughs> <laughs> Just that me is not affected by time. Everything else is affected. The body is affected, the brain is affected, mind is affected, intellect is affected, ego is affected. Everything. That's why even ego is part of the scenery. It is not you. Ego is Shakti, not Shiva. Mind is Shakti, intellect is Shakti. Ego is power. As much as bliss is also the scenery also. Bliss is also power. If you see it as a power, as energy, as a sensation, as something you experience, it's a power. Bliss is power. Also sadness is power. Misery is a power. Anger is a power. So what we call as negative emotion, they are all powers. And through those powers you can destroy and you can create. Anger can create and it can destroy. More often it is destructive, but sometimes it can create also. Similarly, all other emotions. We don't condemn it, we don't say it's bad. It's all part of the scenery, not the seer. And But scenery is married to scenery. <laughs> Gurudev, you've talked about the concept of seer and scenery. If scenery is the equivalent of maya or illusion, are there any effective techniques for coming back to the seer while in, in, engaged in activity? See, the scenery has its power, the seer has its power. These are two things. 
what scenery has the seer does not have? What seer has the scenery does not have? It is like the blind man and the lame person. Consciousness is lame. It cannot work. It cannot function. And the scenery is blind. It cannot see. It has no knowledge. So you have knowledge and it has action. Lame person sitting on the shoulder of a blind man. That is what body-mind combination is. Seer and scenery. So the man who sees, he says, go this way. And then the person walks. He says, turn left. And because the person is blind, so he, he does the action. And they both have their powers. And each power is very unique. That is why never blame this elusive world as bad. This is sacred. That's why it said the concert of Vishnu, of the Lord. The nature is the sweetheart of the divine. So he is, uh, the divine is married to the nature. But one is blind and one, <laughs> one is lame. <laughs> what is speciality of human life, human birth? Why it's so special? Because here you have both, the lame sitting on the blind. The consciousness can only know action is on mind, intellect, memory, ego, body, all this can act. So the knower and known or the scenery, they each have their unique powers and they are complementary to each other. Guruji, all of this is temporary. Everything is temporary. Why does my mind get stuck in the small things? Because it doesn't know it's small. <laughs> <laughs> At that moment, it appears to be very big and too so true, so real. When it appears real, then it gets stuck. Mind can never get stuck when you know it is unreal. You see what I'm saying? See now, you see the sunset, and we see sun is setting, but. From a scientific mind, we know it's not true. It's mm -hmm. just an appearance. Right? Mm -hmm. So reality keeps getting shifted. On one level, yes, sun is setting. This is so real. But from another level, this is not real. Sun never sets. Right? Guru how can I get out of my own head? When you want to get out of it, I tell you you're already out of it. Why do you say that I want to get out of my head? Because you see, your thoughts is creating an illusion and you are tired of the illusion. Because every time you have a concept and you find you were wrong. If every time you are proven you are right, you would never say, I want to get out of my head. Right? Why you want to get out of your head? Because every judgment that you have made, you have seen, over and over again, you find it, it's not right. I told you, you are wrong. Then you say, oh my God, I just want to get out of this head. Now, how to get into a space where every time you think something or you do something and you find you are correct? Intuitive ability for that meditation. Meditate and the right thought will come. Right thought means an intuitive thought. That doesn't go wrong. Guruji, we realize we're dreaming when we wake up. So while we're 100% engaged in this illusory nature of this world, how do we realize that it's an illusion and not get lost in it? When you are lost in the world, when you realize you are lost, you get out of it. You have already out of it. Now, as long as it appears to be real, it doesn't appear to be illusion to you. But when do you realize it was not real, when you feel it is no more charming and it doesn't matter to you and say, hey, this is all illusion. I am just getting stuck and I was getting stuck unnecessarily. It's only a postmortem. It's not a real diagnosis. Whenever you realize this is illusion, you are only doing what? Postmortem. That's it. You are done.
one very great uh, poet in India. He was watching the play and the play was so good and this poet got so engrossed in it and he removed his shoes and just threw at the person. And then suddenly then he realized, oh, it's just a play. He was just playing the role of a villain. And then he went and asked, you give me my shoes back because <laughs> he has to go back. But they said, sir, no, I want to keep this as a souvenir. I'm not going to give you your shoe back. Sorry. <laughs> because this shows that how well I acted and it, it just got you so engrossed in it. So when you are so engrossed in something, you just be 100%. Why do you want to split? When you get tired of it, oh, then you say, just shut it up. You're watching television and selling sunset and you feel so sleepy and tired. Hey, come on, you switch off and you doze off. Why? So when you are tired of watching the movie, then you snap out of it. Yeah. While watching, why do you have to say, oh, this is just television, this is illusion. <laughs> <laughs> why do you have to do that? It will create a split personality. <laughs> When you are watching, watch. And when you snap out of it, just take a good nap and don't get into nightmare selling sunset in your dreams. <laughs> There's a nice story. Um, Adi Shankara was saying, everything is illusion, life is illusion. And then what happened? A crazy elephant came on the street chasing him. Everybody ran for protection, you know. They ran to uh, shelter ends up somewhere and Adi Shankar also ran. <laughs> Someone said, hey, come on. You said everything is illusion. The elephant is illusion. Why are you running? <laughs> he said, yes, yes. I, I still say, I hold on to my theory. My running is also illusion. <laughs> <laughs> so, illusive word and illusive action and illusive compassion too. <laughs> and illusive suffering needs an illusive compassion. Got it. <laughs> Gurudev, are there any examples of ways that we can remain more firmly established in truth while fully engaged in our activities and our relationships in the world? Lead is more art. Why you want to be more perfect? <laughs> now, I'm asking you a question. Why should you not be imperfect? Because you take things too seriously. If you take it as a play, as a game, as a drama, as a movie, then you like all sorts of things being there. Correct? You know, I want to be more perfect. I want to grow more. Where do you have to grow more? You know, the plant doesn't say, oh, I want to grow more. Whatever it is, its size, it's happy. Right? This doesn't say, I want to become a banyan tree. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody will keep, keep this plant, this floaters you know, inside their home. <laughs> What is it you want? Yeah. <laughs> when the mind gets caught up in things, disturbances, judgments, when we're caught, how in those moments do we take life lightly like it's a game? Well, you have been uh, through many nightmares. <laughs> when you wake up, you know you just have a cup of tea <laughs> and then be done with it. So, Time and again, we had to remind ourselves, hey, come on, this is all a dreamlike state and I'm going to get over this. And this is not the first time you have had this uh, experience many a time. You know, a traumatic experience never comes to anyone for the first time at a later age. It only gets recreated, which has been there, some childhood for this or that. We get upset or something or other. And, but we forget all that and we have forgotten how we have been dealing with them also. So just a gentle reminder about our own past experience can help us to snap out of it. You can try that. <laughs> Knowledge and wisdom, I tell you, is the best way to awaken oneself. We're sitting here with you in the illusion and yet your presence is helping us transcend that illusion. When we're not in front of you, what aspects of the illusion can help us become free and not more bound? I tell you, nothing. <laughs> nothing whatsoever can help. Now, now what? 
you are left right you are left lurching that will bring you freedom you know we try to hang on to this or that or that or that see nothing to hang on and then the reality so let's not go to ultimate we want ultimate happiness we want long lasting we want more and more and let us drop all this let's go step by step what you see is this real on questioning the present and it layer by layer it leads you to something bigger something higher something more than what you think you know and you believe so it's always good to go one step at a time rather than thinking about uh, you know a thousand mile you know even if it's a thousand mile it has to begin with the first step so the first step is to see is this real this question is this real who am i is this all what the life is I said no. Okay, what's next? Then, when you keep asking what next, you'll be right here and now. You go in the depth of now. This is very interesting. It's an oxymoron. Yet, you see that is the truth. If you say what next, there is nothing next. But that is what is going to bring you to now and here. when you are happy you wonder oh is this real <laughs> isn't it when you are miserable you know it is real <laughs> when things are joyful you ask the question is this real that's very strange isn't it so you question the truth whatever is real you question it whether it's real and whatever is not we believe that is how it is <laughs> misery we believe more and we question reality yeah good dev when dealing with things like chronic health issues chronic pain what's happening in the body feels like reality how can we move past this so it doesn't drain the prana and interfere with life don't resist them you see this if there is a pain in the body you can't say i don't have pain you have pain be with it it's an intense situation you know if you have done our advanced program the, we have this process meditation in motion what happens when you are doing the process there is pain and then it turns around and appears to be more pleasurable so pain and pleasures are intense sensations in the body but what you see is you are beyond the sensation this experience simply dawns when you accept it the more you keep resisting it it takes longer for you to get out of it the more you welcome it okay i accept it i am with it now then you see you get the strength to overcome that how do i cultivate in my child that there is more to reality than what we see touch and feel you know you cannot force anyone to see the reality you can only gently guide them it's impossible to make someone realize uh, the truth beyond their perceptual uh, reality time and maturity and right education will all lead them to that that direction and exposure to wide range of knowledge and meditation of course identities they get developed in society naturally you don't have to do much about it all that you need to do is making them realize they are much more than the identities that they are identifying with that identity is just like a coat or a jacket or a sweater which you can put on and remove it any time you want this is what we need to teach them rather than thinking the identity as your own skin which can never get rid of unless you go to the grave even there your skin remains in the body so uh, this type of understanding has to be created it's okay to have whatever identity you want to take on but you should know how to get out of it or see beyond the identity so beyond identity you are the most beautiful unidentified living object for <laughs> death in our day to day experiences life becomes very charming and often we don't want to give up the charm 
but we know there's something beyond that, the reality. Can we blend the two? We think the reality is not so charming. <laughs> it's bland and something else here is charming. No, that's not so. Whatever charm you find here is just a reflection of reality. The reality is more charming than anything whatsoever. Truth is the most charming thing. But in the beginning or in the initial stages, truth appeared to be very bitter. That's when you are steeped into one illusion. And when you're just coming out of one illusion, appears reality is very harsh. But in fact, it is the consciousness, the existence of consciousness deep inside of you that uh, brings out these feelings of you know, charm and, and it reflects on anything you do. When you are logged on to the reality or the truth in life, then everything is charming. Everything doesn't become dull and boring. Everything is absolutely charming.